Thank you very much for granting us uh, this interview. Can you state your name? What year were you born and your profession? Uh, my name is an English name is Megan Williams and my Vietnamese Hoang Mong Thu. Born in 1958 in Saigon, Vietnam. Uh, and what do you do for living now? I'm a uh, pharmacy technician for Kaiser, Kaiser uh, Permanente Hospital. In uh, what city? In Warner Creek, California. Yes. Thank you. Uh, after Saigon 4, at that time you was about 17 years old. And uh, uh, can you recall what happened to you and your family? Well, that time is uh, 17, 16 years old. I was grow up in a big family, 15 kids, siblings. My mom and my dad have the Vietnamese restaurant in FA, that's new FA, we serve all the soldiers. And before, I think a year before the Saigon Fall, I, my mom moved out to Daratau next to Tang Sinuk. And my family all is sent to the Catholic school. So we're in Catholic school. I remember the day after Saigon, I mean, the day on April 30, uh, we were saw a lot with the uh, uh, communist soldier. Then a big jeep and tank, they go to the Saigon, go to the Tang Sinuk Cafe. Kind of like my, my family from South Vietnam, we don't know much about North. We don't know much about communists. So we're not really fear. We know our, our country, the, the, the president say we surrender. And we say all oh, the soldiers just walk away, run away to the whole town, you know, with no clothes on, you know, t-shirt on, no shoe, no nothing. Run like crazy. And actually, I don't know where they're running. But the emotion that time, I if it, it confusing, you know. We see all the, the. When I was a kid, I thought the communists are like an animal, because you know, it would all a horrible story. I thought they have you know like a ear or sticking up to like a monster. When I see all this kind of actually young, some of them like younger than I or a little older than I, young teenager, boy, or you know teenager boy a little older. About 16, 18, 20, I think 25 the most. And it it, it, it kind of like, by that time I'm, I was kind of confusing. I said, oh, I thought they like really scary look, but they, they seem like me. I don't know about communists. I don't know about anything you know, between the, the, the Vietnam, North and South, been all, you know, to the whole year where I grew up, you know. I, I um, my village by Tung Minh Ki, Tung Minh Yang, nearby Nhà Thờ Bác Chu, that area. So most of the people, my neighbor, they fear. Because if you know it, Tung Minh Ki, Tung Minh Yang, is uh, the people from, from 1954. They call Bui Chu Phát Diệm. They all ran away from the communists. So they know what the communists are about. And they more fear than the South people, than my family. Um, but uh, right after that, would you still be, be able to go to school or what happened? No, um, because of Catholic school. The first thing, they, um, I remember the time we go to school and the father, I remember father and them thought. And they are coming in, the communists, you know. By that time, it's not really communists. I just saw that some similar people like me, they would have a red tag, little red ribbon in here and they automatically communists. And they come in, they guard the father out. All the father out get out of the school. And they close the school from that point on. Then uh, they're changing. They said they're changing the, um, uh, the director and the people work in the rent for the school and, and that time. And right after the school closed, my family, some of my sisters met with uh, American, a Vietnamese soldier who fought for, for uh, for South Vietnam, some of my sister left with her husband and without her husband to to American by that time. So my mom kind of fear, and we're not sure what's going on. Then uh, by 19, I believe 75, 76, my mom, who is from uh, Wang Nam, one of the <coughs> villages. <coughs> You were talking about your school got um, see by uh, the new government, communist government. Can you continue? So uh, they closed the school down, and by that time, at the whole village, you know, like whole like uh, they call Phuong, um, 
they try to get all the key needs together uh, to have like a sinvin I mean not sinvin hop sin thang wang da red not what to say that but they try to get all the younger a little teenage and younger they get to a group and in the morning they make sure to go exercise uh, to the whole village they get a lot of uh, North Vietnam music day and night all the time and we the teenager teenage girl or boy or little kid have to learn by the group and we do a lot of activity together so I will join with them you have no choice you have to join with them and uh, from that and later on I think you have half year six six months after that one of my mom cousin grandfather cousin he the cousin what my grandfather but he from the village back in Guangnam so he go with the common 1954 and he come back to visit Saigon to visit my mom and he said we if we want to stay in Saigon one of us, one of the family members, had to be work or be the communist. By that time, my older sister, who is the second year in medical school, my younger sister is about two years younger than I, and a whole bunch of younger sibling after that. So, and then my father agreed to serve, to save the house in Saigon and to try to provide in Saigon the city. So I remember my father take me and my sister go back to. Bình Dương, Bình Hòa, which is all the rubber tree plant station. So I think the first day I mean, it's a, the, this, the town is so small, only one a day, the old, very old uh, bus go through the village. And it's just uh, a lot of uh, rocket hole through the whole street when we up and down. A lot of dye, uh, like dye, dry double tree to the way and the smell smell horrible if you know smell proper is really bad so the, we a teenager come in the village with Kali and everybody look at us like a, a funny because I believe this is so old outside the country and I I know they got took over by communist government since 69 or 70 that time so they look at us like we from the city girl we from Catholic school and we dress up different thing. And my father take us in and talk to the my uh, grandfather, who he the high ranch in the rubber tree plantation. He like the director. And my dad looked at me. My sister said, "Hey, I cannot stay here. How about you guys?" And I look at. I said, "You know, I have no choice. Either me and my sister have to sacrifice this, and I take that. I sign my name." work with communists to be a part of it. So I believe the day my father take me and my sister go. And when they left the village, you know, I had to from Saigon and look at the dry tree and the smell and, you know, when the the, the bus kind of missed in planning to the rubber tree, I, I told a lot empty. In, in just like one of the animals you lost in the forest, you don't know where to begin, where to run, what to do next. I begin to live with, with them. By that time, a lot of uh, we call Bodoi, you know, all the Bodoi and communists. Well, they like us, but they are Bodoi and they call them Chi and all that. So funny when they call me Dong Chi too, and they kind of so scary, you know, <laughs> Dong Chi to me is so horrible. <laughs> but I get used to it for a while. My job there is uh, because I finished school on the eighth grade, so I know how to add all up, you know. So in the morning, about two thirty in the morning, uh, in front of the village, you know, the office of, the, of my, my my grandfather, they let a big bell, they knock, bang, 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 bang. You can hear the whole village because so at the, in the morning it's so quiet, so the noise is really far and go to the whole village and. You see all the people from the village come in to get the sign up who go with what, where we rub the tree, this section or that section. Um, one section, one group about 20 people. Eight people have to rubber 253 from 
morning before the before the, the, the you know let's get start early in the morning morning mist still you have to start by noon you cannot uh, rubber tree did no more because they don't they want they don't want to damage the juice so whatever you do and honestly to the whole uh, rubber tree plant station a lot of hole so some tree rock cut by the, the hole and they use that to walk through the water you know dust water uh, all kind of animal in that water and I, I look at it and I say oh my gosh how can they carry 20 liter eat hand to balance it to little wrench it to walk from this side to another side to give and you know collect the rubber tree and uh, the people in the village I think they get used to with the the, the lifestyle the work hard just quiet and do it do what they can do don't cry don't complain or too scared to cry too scared to complain and I remember my first day I got a job First of all, I have to learn how to rubber the tree. Two ways to do. Either the knife, you can, from the top, you go and down. You go around the tree, or you can use the knife to dig it up. Two ways to drop the tree. And when the tree is juice, and you see the rubber tree, they have a little cup, coconut cup. After uh, the juice coming down, and they go collect it, and the next morning, they dry, you know, the, around the cut. They dry, so you have to peel that before you cut for the next day. Uh, I look at I I kind of funny this smell. And one time I pass out because every day in Saigon they give you the uh, chemical, the, the, the truck come in with the chemical to give the juice to keep the juice it, it loose. It's too watery. Okay, some they don't have enough of the chemical. So what they save the barber tree is they they make a little hole and they put the poncho you know the plastic bag. They dump the juice in there for three days. They cover it up like a little, little pillow, about the size of a pillow. So one day, we will collect that. The people will collect it and follow them. I'm about to pass out because I see when they pull the, the pillow up, you know, the rubber tree bundle, little pillow, or it's a, uh, what do you call, warm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The warm or some kind of uh, uh, what is it called? It, it, because the, the tree is not clean I and mean, the, the, the dust not blend and that's where the war going on so a lot of people die in there you know all the meat and all that still now so, oh, and they, she holds she hung up a whole bunch of those I pass out I kind of oh my god oh my god it, it's so scary and the, the, the girl who the lady who hold that she not even she not even mine it's one of all the things I, I see in, in that too at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, what time you start, what time you got it done, and uh, um, during that time, how much the food you have to eat? And Well, because I am kind of work with my uh, my father, who is the boss, yeah, so I eat what I want, but the thing I hate the most is the uh, back then we use the rubber tree to cook, you know, the, 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 the wood, it smell. It smell coy, it smell like oh, it's horrible. I can't even drink in the water cooked by that wood. So or I always add all the tea and sugar to cut the smell. I hate that. I used, in the morning we start like two, two o'clock in the morning and by noon time when the people from from the group, from the the worker they come back, they report to me how much they juice a day. I have to keep up how much they juice a day for one person, how much for the whole group. And I have to report because they get paid by how much they produce, how many days they work, and how much the juice they produce. And we finish by three, and they all can go. And uh, in the, after three o'clock, the people who are the worker, they have to make sure that the tree where they where they uh, section it, they make sure under the tree is clean. As you know, it been long and long. All the rubber tree is kind of red, the leaf is red and really dry. They if it caught on fire, it's really fast and really bad. So what did we do? They try to clean up the bottom. So when the long it the the fry don't got caught on the bottom on the root, they be okay. So one day I was sitting about three o'clock and after I finished all the recording and I heard Bao Fe, which is one of my uh, my Dong Chi, one of the boy who's sixteen years old like me and he, he said, Fire, fire, fire 
Here I sit down, I, I, I'm right, listening to the, the silence from the fireman, fire truck, whatever. And I look around, look around, I don't see nothing. It's fire, fire. And then I, next thing I see all the, from village, everybody come out. Some with the bucket, some with the big uh, piece of uh, steel, everything they can hand it on, the, you know, hold on their hand. We run to the fire. And I look at it, oh yeah, I said, where, where are we going? Where are we waiting for the fire truck? He said, he look at me like an idiot. He don't even know what the fire truck is about. <laughs> it never happened up there. They look at me and I said, you better go. But that's also funny. You know how they, they uh, not me, but they come in with the bicycle, right? They have to run. They hold the bicycle, they run, and they jump over on the top of the bike. I have to follow him and jump it. I fall many times. <laughs> I don't learn how to do that. So he said, you better come here and I'll take you over there. So I like follow him, sit on the back of the bicycle. He, he by me. Oh my God, the the fire caught from the top, because all the, the top of the tree, thought ran kind of fire everywhere. You know, our people, the worker, the you, whatever, it, to to heat the the branch that fall on the floor. A little fire, a little big fire, they tried to heat it to stop it. And I look it up, I said, oh, the branch that fall on them, on top of them. I kind of, my God, they protecting the life of the tree. They make sure the tree still use. So you can be alive. But how about them? They, they sacrifice their life for church for that. And uh, so I, I got a lot of, by that time I make a lot of story. And you know, 16 years old, you still like, on the team, you wandering around. I write a lot of story. It did a memory I never forget. You know, you, the people really sacrifice that. Uh, did they uh, train to do that, or if they don't do that and uh, it uh, rubber got damaged, they would be punished? So you know why they did that? I think, honestly, I never asked them why they did it. On the front of them, with they, 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 they knowledge that time? Or they took one to know how to stop the fire for they live in the next day. For they would use that train at them. We more choose to send to Saigon. More, more choose to, to send to the manufacturer. That's all I know. But I never actually asked him why you do that. But I asked my uncle, I mean my grandfather, I said, why don't we have something better? Why we have water? Why we have a fire truck in? What's wrong with it? And he said, you know, you are like Saigon kid. <laughs> Only thing I did is wrong. You were the road from Catholic school, you know, uh, or you were Saigon people. You don't know nothing. You know, nothing like that to shut me off. I see. Um, when you say that they are uh, who are or who were those workers? Where the, what uh, background? Are you talk about the government or the, the people, the, the workers? The people who work in work the for the in the plantation. Mm -hmm. The 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 people in the village. Uh, the, the what they call young mm -hmm. The the people in that village. You no, know, um, the member of the, the village. They they not like work for the government. They just work. I see. But they they do that for money? I mean, they got paid? Yes, of course they pay. I believe by that time, I think that time it $34, not even dollar, $34, dong, no. 34 dong per person who can produce. And not just $34 cash, they have like, uh, I think, half kilo of sugar, one can of milk, or uh, a yard, uh, one more two about a yard, half a yard of uh, fabric. And the fabric the same color, you know, the same thick cotton fabric. And some, and rice, like how many kilo and how many cup per person. But once a month we go to Yokting, which is the headquarter to get pay, to get all that, we bring it back. And it's horrible. The rice is actually not for people, for human to eat. It make broken rice and I think in South Tan, in South Saigon, before seventy five, that just we we cook for the the pig. But here, the people are eating that, and I believe like a few kilogram of uh, tan charcoal, something like that. And uh, if you don't work in a year, in a month, thirty days, if you not produce it more than twenty five days, you get cut off. You don't get that. You don't get. The, uh, the, the food or the number of, for not the same another person. And I always, I remember every time I, I eat the rice or whatever it is, in a little cup, one liter, I kind of like pack it down, so pack them up 
every day, every time I would get in trouble with the government, you know, with the, we call all the Dong Chi office, they come and they say, okay, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you would still, uh, me, uh, we, me, we still in that head, so you, you have, you cannot treat them like that. So I always get in trouble with that. I'm curious, with 34 Dong and uh, some other kind of battle, uh, from the government, you work and you got the good instead of the money. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, uh, one person you talking about 34 dong and uh, some rice, some uh, sugar, for mm -hmm. it per month or per day? Per month. Per month. Per month. With that, how many people can live off of that? They all live in that because, you know, they have everybody have their own house. You know, they have like little chairs and little, you know, don't have to that. Um, they have some chicken. They have some uh, vegetables, they roll, some potatoes, sweet potato, quite meat, and you know, all that. So they make between the rice and some sweet potato or some uh, uh, quite meat. It's uh, those stuff to mix in and low lamb or the, anything they come back, yeah, they eat. <laughs> well, they, they're hungry all the time. You think with that enough to eat? I mean, for them to survive? The nutrition, I don't think they have enough in nutrition, but I think it, I never hear the complaining. I think that more the survival. They, whatever they can put in the table, whatever they can eat, they eat. But it's so the people is so take it, abuse or whatever they just take it with a quiet. They they, they don't have no choice to take it. Why they put up with that? Because of they were scared. Or, yeah. uh, I. I not. Uh, I don't saw the scare, but they see like uh, the only way they can survive. The only thing they can do over that village, only you do, either you do the rubber tree or you don't do nothing, you just stay home. One day, it, it is killing me, um, one day a mom, a single mom, with the daughter who is 11 years old. You know, 11 years old, we sleep late at night, you know, stay up late in the morning, we don't get up early. So the mom who go to the forest to rubber the tree. But in the morning, every morning, the girl, after the sun up, the girl follow the mom, help her to, to take the juice, to empty the juice, to bucket, so can take to the leader. That girl never come back. She never come back. She missed, she disappeared on the forest. And we don't know where we can find her. Every, you know, like, like in June, summertime, you know, the tree is so, if you look at the tropical tree, everything, they all the all the leaf it connected together, right? All you see just a straight forward. Every everywhere you see it's really clear straight. She the mom keep looking from this end. She stay this end and that end to looking for her daughter. Where has she go? And the robot tree they have a, a little fruit, dry fruit. And by that time in the morning it's so hot. Noon time so hot, but by the evening by the sunset, the cold and the hot, they broke the fruit. It make like a pop. They pop that fire crack here and there, here and there. That time I sit down and feel like the tear, the right tear from the moon. Rock, one, one noise by another noise, by pop, another pop. So dry and so, the pain is so, so raw. So hurting. I, I look at her face and look at the tree and look at all the popping around her. It, it's horrible. Thank you for sharing us uh, with that. Um, uh, would you join with the uh, young volunteer group called Tang Nien Sung Phong? I that? never had that, ch that chance because my uncle and my grandfather uncle it took me to be a communist. <laughs> Uncle communist, so I, I, I get away from it. I see. So what happened to you in that uh, rubber plantation? <laughs> it is a story. It did just share. My uh, who called my grandfather tried to rape me. I ran away. At night, I ran to from my. Well, after my my uh, after I be the communist, become the work for the government, I have a, a right a piece of land to develop. So my mom and my brother who can use the land to be a survive. So we have how it's like one and how with that. So my um, we develop a, a little market, you know, sell everything, just for sell everything. 
song, sugar, everything there. So one day he he tried to beat me. I ran away. I ran from where I'm at in the village to my mom, where we supposed to have the house and, and, and the little market there. About 19 years old, I ran. In, because at night you cannot see. It's so thick, the, the, the dark so so thick. You cannot see and I'm so scared of that. I'm scared of snake. So I closed my eyes and ran. And ran to the point. My heart and my footstep at the same beat. And then uh, all I see is the uh, 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 fire. But every time you, the, he hit my eye, it got a little shiny flat in the eye. I ran uh, halfway to my mom's house and then the calmness, you know, the, uh, like a like a wound, like security. A security. I said, Who is that? Where are you going? I said, I'm going to my mom. You cannot go. You cannot continue to go. You have to come back. So then I come back to the village. The people in the village asked to stay overnight. In the morning, I go to ask my mom, my house. Didn't tell my mom. Too scared. Don't know what to say. But they don't want to come back. They don't want to come back in there. He had not do nothing yet. I already ran. I, I kind of kicked him and pushed him and then he fell back in the, on the bed and broke his head. <laughs> so I keep running and, and I don't want to come back there again. So I uh, I come back to my mom's house and I said, no, I'll go back there. If he want me to work, I stay in my mom's house and in the morning I will come in the village to work. He don't want to. He don't want to say that. He said, because I already signed up to be a communist. You know, like you should, you should give yourself to to be a communist, to work for the family. You cannot back to your family. They call it totally. I don't want to. So I ran away. So next week, I, uh, because my mom, how by that time, we have a market, there will be like a set off. They stop there. They bring the people from Saigon, from different places to be a uh, they so they got new economies. Yeah. So I I I hitched with the, the bus back to Saigon. But because I cannot stay in Saigon because I, I took my name up the whole call of the family thing, I cannot stay in my mom's house. So I have to live with friends. Blessings. By that time I hang around I hang around with a lot of bad people. I hang around with prostitutes. I hang around with um, stealing. By that time, we're not gang members, just stealing. They're not like killing a thing like that, you know. And yes, by that time, I hang around with the people drug addicts. I hang around with what people bang mau, you know, like in the morning. So yeah, so blood, you know. So I hang around with a lot of people to be a spy. My mom don't know about that, you know. I I don't want connecting it to my mom because I don't want they punish my mom. They will take the land away from her. With the windy blow, they will give hard time for my family. So I can can I disappear. Uh, for about two years. Two years. Do, do you actually have to um, steal or become a prostitute to live? I, I never visit be a prostitute or stealing. I think that my girlfriend already good, cute, and beautiful, and I am. And we have a little coffee shop, sell the coffee shop, but actually at the parks are too dying, you know, under, under cover. <laughs> and uh, the people just come take all my girlfriend's house, I, my, my girlfriend now and I get the most to stay home and clean up and make a coffee. <laughs> Nobody wanted me, it must be really ugly by then. <laughs> so, and then I met a doctor who is, uh, he been doctor 1975. I live with him. They're like uh, uh, they're like, uh, uh, living together, and then he his family pretty well known. I would not say who well known family, and his family give him money to go uh, uh, escape. By that time, like you, if you Chinese uh, uh, driver license, a Chinese label, you can go like fourteen p go. So he go one of the route. And after he left, before he left, he gave me some money and asked me to escape if I have a chance. 
if he can make California American, he will continue to send the money to support me. For that, he disappeared. I heard his boat is, um, I think, over 300 and 400 people in that boat in the, with the name of the Chinese. The government, after took the money from them, they bombed them. After they left the, uh, the outside of the river for a little while, they stung the whole boat. A lot of people got killed. I believe the whole boat got killed. And a lot of money because Chinese, they, they build a boat and they, they hide the gold inside that boat. That's why I heard, but never see him again. Never talk to him. And whatever money he gave me, I was able to get a hook up and then run away from from communists. In the book, people of 1979. Um, how many people and what happened to that, uh, that your journey? To your journey? It uh, the trip went several several times, but we never make it until the last time. With the, I think 44 people, the four kids and 40 of us, we go on the boat in uh, they call Minlun but yeah, you know, it's horrible. It's very horrible. I'm 17 years old. You know, I did a woman full develop, and um, because I don't have enough money, the only uh, the total the, the the boat for one person is six pieces of gold. Six pounds and a half. No, six pieces. A piece and a half. Yes, <laughs> six out of gold. I don't have enough. I have five real one, and then one of my my friend, my sister said. You cannot go because you have me sick. What I did is I saw one real one. I buy two fat. You know, some go but not full go. So I told her I have five. In there two not good go and three good go. And because of that, I voluntarily to come down to a small boat first. Hopefully they don't kick me out or they, they don't find out because after you go to the boat they give you give the gold. So maybe that time they cannot send you home, they cannot do anything to you. That's what I did. It's horrible. By that time, we don't know. I don't know. You know, I just go down and then the guy, you have to pay from the, the guy who has a little boat. They, they, they sell you out to the big boat where they hidden, uh, 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 hidden people. Because the, the human, the boat goes to the ocean or fishing, it stays somewhere else. And the little boat will take people. The taxi, little, boat. The taxi boat. Come little by little, hitting us different area of the, the river to the ocean and and we wait. I think I come down like 10 whole day before I really actually go on a big boat. And that old man who were a taxi it tried to take advantage of me. I, I'm the first one to come down first and I hit underneath of the taxi you know like so we underneath that and he asked me, you know, don't go, let him take me go to have tea and live with him. And I look at him here like my grandfather, age, and he smoked the, uh, took young, a big cigar. And all I look, I hide in the, the taxi boat and I kind of look at him outside. By that time, I did not know when the man is kind of exciting. When he smoked, you know, I always see the, 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 the cigarette light, you know, just like shining and shining continually. Now I'm old, so I, I, I know that when he exciting that, that thing, he popped the, the, the secret like that. And I stay and I look at him and say, oh my God, if I stay inside the boat, only myself and him, the first night, you know, he might come and rape me or do something. I'm so scared. Then I decide to come out. This is the weird thing. When I come out and I sit inside the boat, you know, he sit there and I sit here and he, he kind of tried to touch me and then he said, uh, don't need to go. You stay, I take care of you. You know, we, we can move to Hatin and all that stuff. And I look at him, I, I don't have no money. And I don't want to get to this. I don't I want you to get. I lost all the money with you. I'm thinking about killing myself. So I remember the water at night, the water go up. So when I touch him, like, the water is so cold. But when you put the water, it's cold. I can feel the difference of my cold hand and the cold water. You can, you can feel two different corners. And he, he tried to drive it over me. And he, you know, I, and I, I, I stick my hand, I said, that's it. I just bend over and get robbed in the water and get over with. I don't want to deal with it. However, so Stanley, one of the light, shiny light, just flashing between us. And then the boy of the man said, hey, 
I'm going fishing and I know over here a lot of goat. And I see your thought. I want to parallel parking. So I hire a, a goat. The goat you know, too scared because too many people. And it's South accent. And the fight is so dark. And between that time, me and him, because the, the light is so shiny, we kind of couldn't see nothing else no more, you know. And then I kind of crawling back to my uh, my bed inside inside the room, a little boat. And then uh, from that point, I believe from nine o'clock until like early morning, to the whole night, that boat. I don't see the boat. I just see the boy. I just hear the boy singing the Kai Lung to the whole time. In the morning when I come out, early morning I come out, it disappear. It disappear. I don't know where they go. You don't see, you know, like the, 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 the engine or, or the, 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 the cell and thing. You don't hear, but it's just gone. But that in that morning, everybody tried to they, they ship people in and out. So I kind of, lucky me. <laughs> I'm gonna, I can accept that thing. <laughs> Good. Like, uh, uh, you think that maybe a... Uh, <coughs> The ghost, <laughs> ghost or miracle happened to save you, you think? In my life, a lot of miracles. Think I'm not sure. It's somehow confusing, is it? Because when you live in the, vi in the village, you know, at night, you see the mess. In the morning, when you come to the property, you see the little, from a lot of, a lot of soldiers, a lot of war in that era. A lot of people die and just shove it and a lot of body there. So a lot of, uh, a big hump of the land, of the, uh, the the dust, and the village people who know who what, they only counting the, the, the area with the number of that hump, they call mo, and then at night it totally did a lot of mist, kind of beautiful mist from the bottom go up, go circle and circle, the village thing is a goat around, yeah, ghost town, goat town, but I I don't believe in that. I feel like because the morning is so hot at night, by the time it's hot, the, 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 the mix with the, the heat, it will come in that circle and, and thing. But I don't know. We have gold? I, I don't know. I have another protection. I Yes, I think so. But I cannot say. Okay. It's not clear. So tell me about your trip. So we end up, from that we end up to Malaysia, Charity King. How many days in Russia? Uh, first, when we first meet the, I remember we meet the first international, when we go to the international, we see the boat, we put the SOS, you know, waiting and waiting. Everybody from the heat under the bottom, we come up, try to let them know we are drapery, you know, we are both people. And some boat just passed by, but no, our boat so small. And the next time when we about go to, not Hong Kong is uh, Singapore. When we act, we about get to in Singapore, and then we see another like uh, a police boat from the Singapore people. They come out and they stop us. They don't let us come in. They said we got a lot of rock. If you come in, our, our boat we will sink. They don't want us to, so they hold it outside. And then they use the boat. They take every one of us get into the village. And Singapore people they wear like uh, a sarong, like the Cambodian people. So they have a doctor, they send a doctor to, to see how our health and they give us some more food, some more water and they pull us out, pull us back. I think about more than a day, a day and a half. So Stanley, they pull us out and we hardly speak English, we're not sure what they take us and we assume they take us back. They said in a broken English, my people thought they, they take us to go to the referee camp or somewhere we can be a referee. And halfway, a day and a half, so Stanley, they cut the string, and I both lost the balance. Like, we thought everybody got killed. Like, and then, and lucky, we still survive. And then we go again, and we make from that to uh, Malaysia. Before Malaysia, the, the captain, he in the boat, he come out at a license, is, did go fishing. He not, he had to come back a certain time. And did you know what, during the whole time we were out, they still fishing. Because when they come back, they have to prove they're fishing. So they would, we go underneath the boat seat, they dump a lot of fish on us. And I, Rachel, and, and, and farming, because we were 42, about 44, but we just sit like this. We can't even straight out. And we're farming each other, rice, fish. Until now, I cannot eat fish. I cannot touch the fish. 
it's it's so scary. Anyway, and um, when we end up um, at Malaysia, and the guy said, "Well, we we got to go home. We cannot. We not time. We don't have time to to stay no more." So they stay in the little far out in the land. But we saw some some house, some a wood house, like uh, like like. Uh, the, the house in, like, in the carbon. Yeah, carbon house. And they said, okay, we rock you, everybody up. They push everybody down the water. I don't know how to swim at all. And of course, you have to be over your head. If not, the boat will be stuck. So I wake up. It's another miracle thing. I remember I kept flowing, flowing. Somebody just hold me and push it back, hold me and push it back, hold me and push it back. And the next thing I remember, when I opened my eyes, a lot of stars. The sky, is, the sky is so clear and all the stuff. And I look around, I see all of us there. And some of us try to sweep, you know, sweep uh, our, our clothes to make it warm and try to put a fire came on. So in the morning, we say, oh, that's down here, down this way. We have a lot of house, a lot of tank. Maybe it's a refuge. Somebody we have to go. So 44 of us, I, I carry, I have a lady who carried a baby, two and four years old. I hold in the four years old and she hold the two years old. We kind of walk along the beach and try to go to that area. The next thing I know, a lot of the people kind of dark, like Cambodia, like uh, Malaysia people, that is they dark and they have a, a, a gun with a little knife on the phone. They kind of poke it up, they run to us and they get the knife. They, they're not shooting, they're not. Um, stopping. Yeah, they try to stop and not scare us. Oh my god, it's just like. What it is, you know, and we 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 so scared we can't sit down and can they need out, you know, they can all the noise with different languages. Everybody can like, need out, you know, baking, and I I couldn't I couldn't cry. I can't like, look around. Can it's so sharp? And the lady go and she said, crying, crying, make noise, make noise. So they don't hurt her. They don't kill her, you know. So we can like, sweet the, the the baby to make the baby crying, and uh, the one other guy, a soldier who. You the the, the, the 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 night poke in one of our, our people who happened to be the father, and then the the boy saw the girl, the, the soldier who hit the father. Please please don't hit my father, the one I holding. Say please don't hit my father. You know, and then the next thing I know, the whole bomb on my face. Okay, the the soldier one hit the boy for him to stop, but the boy he kind of hit away. So I the one got that. That to have on the feet. And it, it kind of, a lot of times I said, Oh God, this is freedom. I didn't come here for this. I don't know, I don't even know, you know, how the life here, or whatever freedom is, but that's the, the memory of that. We stayed here about a year. Where you will stay after you reach to the land, was it a island? Uh, or how many people lived there? And you said, uh, Were they Malaysian? And what kind of, um, uh, I mean, um, way of living over there? Uh, we, it's, it's Malaysia, uh, Malaysia, but I'm not sure, it's uh, like to the, uh, the island, but by the beach area, all the sand, so all the boat go over there. They, uh, when we walk to the roof, and the reason that they, when we come, when they see us, they took us, they hold us, they hold us for over three days. They ask where the boat. Every day, every two hours, they come out. Each person where our boat because our boat turn around. We just say our boat broke and we just swimming in. Another boat helping us and make a story, but they don't believe it. So they carry about three days before they actually take us to the camp because thank God that actually the camp area we go in. Then when we walk when it, from, from that area, we walk to the camp and at that time a lot of Vietnamese people, they see the new boat people, they come up and hi, hello, and they try to look for a friend or family or the neighbor, whoever it is. I think by that time when I first came in, it's about six or seven thousand people were there in the, this uh, camp guy, you know, the bob white around and, and uh, we coming in and they give us a, a tent. And no matter how big the boat, just one tent. So I'm become single, so I have to stay at the end of the tent. So at night it's raining or whatever, it, I don't want to get wet. And give us some um, the food, the box. So we cut that box to put, to put on the sand to, to sleep on. 
No blanket, no nothing. Do you remember the name of that camp? Charitin camp. So at the time, uh, you stayed there for the whole year, and uh, you remember, uh, you said that about six, seven thousand were there when you came in. When you left, how many that camp hold? Uh, more than ten. I, I could cannot see how many because that people in and out and they uh, crash car interview and a lot of family they can say they're too long. Some of them, when I first came in this camp, people they start there like two years or more than three years waiting to come to another country to sponsor. Some of them they cannot get to American so they go to Canada, different country area but uh, by I left, I think it's more than 15. Like I remember the, it's so many people so hot and don't have the restroom. It's so funny. They have a whole area for us to take a shower. And the, uh, the Malaysian people, the government, they stand on top and look to all the women take a shower. And like the whole, they have a the big uh, like open area for a shower. They just cover the, the sign, but you can look through it. Even the bathroom, the toilet. I'm too, too scared with the bathroom and it's so embarrassed because they make one side for men, one side for women. You sit and look another side and you know, I'm just too embarrassed and too dirty. A lot of market, market something, the, uh, magnet. magnet, they come out and, oh, and the smell. When you go to the bathroom three days, you still smell it. Your body smell for the whole nine months. And then my sister who spawns me from, from that to America. During that time, you have any memory? Or from that camp you want to share? It's an animal. It, it, they said a referee came, but it, uh, it's horrible because so many people and they controlled by the, the army of the Malaysian. And I remember one day, if you and dad get crazy and a man kind of fighting, if, if your man fighting, they take, both of you have to take your clothes off and fighting on front of the camp people. Over 15 or 10,000 people watching you fight. And then some of the men, they would try to sell, buy sugar to the people who work because we around with the barbed wire and have like, the control on us. You know, the soldier will control around us. And some of them go buy cigarette, men like cigarette and sugar, whatever. If they caught it, they put the old person, we, the zero review in, in, the, in the back, the right back. They tie them up and they heat it. So you, you don't know how to cover yourself. It's horrible. It, it, it's an animal. So what day would you be able to get out of that uh, animal uh, cage? My sister sponsored me from Malaysia to Alabama. I end up in Alabama for a year after. I begin and end up in, Chic in Chicago. And it's so funny. It is a funny story. We went first. They take the whole people from Kuala Lumpur to a different area. Can they take to Chicago? When you now in Chicago by November, it's a lot of uh, snow. And I kind of like, oh my god, it's wonderful. We never see snow back in Vietnam, right? And it was scary. Every one of us they have this whole boat. We go in there right away. We have a green car. They have a the people in immigration. They work paper and then immigration, and everybody have a bag. The coverage cross area, you know, and all I know, everybody asked me, I hand it back to them. I mean, the envelope to them, I don't know what it is. I think it, um, my sister sponsor, I stay there. I think it, I end up in the hotel. They give you stay in the hotel, and everybody, I stay with the family, husband and wife, and they hand up the diver. We don't know diver. <laughs> and he look at me, and I look at her, everybody, what to do with the diver? You know, and the lady who helped me, I try to show the baby how to wear a diaper, but we cannot make it, we cannot funny to the parent, so we didn't do it. And another thing, funny thing, is, and from, from Chicago, I have to take the small airplane with the people, with the regular people. The first airplane check for everybody, referee like us, so we know each other, we gotta talk and wonder where you go, where your sister go, where your cousin, whatever. But and after we separate our each of us go individual, we go different area. I'm going to Malaysia. So I sit in I don't remember the American ally, I think. So I sit in there with my envelope on my lap. My my pen got a hole. <laughs> and then um, I didn't ask nothing, drinking or sing, eating because I saw the guy sit next to me. He paid. I did not know the food is free. Because he paid he drinks liquor. 
And I said, oh God, I don't have no money. It, so the lady, 14 hours, 12 hours, 12 hours 14 hours, somewhere that area, and she water, thank you. I know, thank you, <laughs> and water. And she feels sorry, later she passed it, oh, juice. Okay, I got all juice. And I don't see, she had money, and I know, oh yeah, free brain. <laughs> I didn't have any food. So 14 hours, you eat nothing? Nothing, just, Orange juice, depending on what she like, she offered me soda, yeah, coke, yeah, orange juice, yeah. Uh, so, um, how you start your new life? What you do? You went to school? Or so, I went to school. I stayed with my my sister for a while, and I met my uh, my husband in Dallas. Oh, I my we moved from uh, Alabama to Dallas because okay. Alabama is a lot of American people. And then I, I want to go back to some lot of Vietnamese. So a friend of mine said, Oh, Dallas a lot of Vietnamese. So and we moved to Dallas. I actually go to Dallas with my friend <laughs> and then met my husband to marry and married with uh, he from Thailand but uh, he Chinese Thailand people so marry him. Was it the, a love marriage or how No. Love? I think, oh my God, I hardly speak English. He looked at me, he said, you're beautiful. And I look at him, I said, you're beautiful too. <laughs> so that's how the marriage started. I think because I, I walked to, to the bus and then by that time I hardly speak English, tried to get a paper you know, to go to work. So he gave me a drive from the supermarket, Asian supermarket, because he's still selling the vegetable hood mom row at the backyard. So the lady Thai lady said, oh, this guy is good. In my, not good English, but I know he is good because he says so. And then you know, he got money, okay. And then she tried to hook us up. And then I think we married, we have kids. For 10 years. How many kids? Uh, Michelle, Michael, and Melanie, three kids. Now the Michelle passed away. Michael, he just finished um, LOA. And Melanie now third year of medical school. Wow. Uh, tell me about uh, your marriage. Was it last long or what happened? No, actually not good. My uh, my mom, my mother-in-law, who is Tio Cho, but Thailand, he, she already set up a marriage for him back in Thailand. And we married. So, But he's a good guy. He listened to his mom a lot. So a lot of physical abuse, a lot of... I hardly speak English, you know. and. It, it, the communication not working, so and she stayed between cot and middle. Um, actually, she wanted him to marry with his sister, two brother married to sister, because she wanted to adopt all his kids from Thailand to over here. But by that time, after I marry him, I won't let him do it because I feel like a kid's supposed to belong to family. But that time, I don't know about you know freedom and all that from Thailand and American, so I won't sign the paper. And she tried to make everything impossible for us to fighting and argue and all that. So we divorced after 10 years. Uh, tell me about your uh, Michelle. What happened to her? So, I, after I divorced with Keith, I mean with my, my husband, with three kids. I'm single parent, with for three child. I did not go anywhere for that. I work and... Um, I met a, one of my uh, my boss who was a pharmacist. By that by that time, I'm still a clerk in the pharmacy, and the boss is kind of love me, and he don't, he ordered me like 20 years old. And I asked him, I said, I will marry you, but my kid has to have education. You know, if you promise me, I'll be you know whatever, but my kid needs that education. So I married with Jack. Uh, he the pharm doctor pharmacy for eight years. So we able to put Michelle, Michael, Melanie to college at UC Berkeley all four years. And then Jia passed away a few months after the Michelle, my older daughter, diagnosed the cancer of leukemia. After she finished four years at UC Berkeley. Um, can you uh, recall how Michelle found out her uh, le leukemia disease and what kind of endurance she went through and the family went through? Michelle, healthy kid, after 24 years school, she really, really have a good time. Friend, she activity, do a lot of exercise, uh, 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 like health uh, exercise, 
ride your bicycle to voting gate and all that. And uh, one day she said she got headaches, continually headaches, and she talked to the doctor. The doctor thinks she uh, worked too much to, uh, like uh, accounting, she said too much on her mind, and got headaches constantly. And then she find out at night, she like little shadow in her eyes. She only went to the doctor. The doctor did not diagnose it until she developed her immune system now. She developed like tired and then uh, she began like herpy. One of the uh, like a single, she started that. And then one day she ended up take a test, blood test, and they, they take a day a month, a month before diagnosis, she had a leukemia. By that time, in the in the Asian community, it, leukemia is one of the disease you have to have a boat and a uh, bone marrow transplant just to save the person. So by that time, only 0.3 percent in the database of the Asian community. So right away, the first thing when I heard that I feel guilty, very guilty. I think now I still feel guilty. Like you look back in Vietnam, I said because the parent not doing a good job. And that one Michelle got it, you know. And I remember now that my kid did when I was in Vietnam. One of my girlfriend who is teenage like me, and she got pregnant, and I took her to the hospital to have a lipo, you know, portion. And I think one of that it haunted me. That what punished Michelle to be at leukemia. First thing I feel so embarrassed, so guilty. And then she, I have to ask her, they said the doctor said you have to get a bone marrow transplant and your family don't really match, they're not simply not match, only thing you can reach it outside. We looked at that, but they no, nothing, so we, for the, you know I'm a well-known in community, in the community, I'm a well-known, so for me to go on the air to ask for help, it's, I have to get over that first, I have to get over my guilty first and embarrassed first. So I talked to Michelle, I said, Michelle, Michelle asked me, Mom, do you want to do it? Yeah. So we, I took her go every station, every newspaper to ask for to come forward to sign up for Michelle. So we have Project Michelle going on. By that time, a lot of uh, patients who in the assembled with Michelle, they kind of follow each other, you know, met to you and feel more. Good fight the match. Finally, she used the umbilical cord, which is just a story, new story. He not had after three and a half years. She survived because of all the chemo. You know, all the, every chemo lasts you seven months. So she left for three or four rounds of chemo, and she passed away. Michelle is one of the heroes. She will not until the day she dies. She will not let me see her tear. After the doctor gave her four to six weeks to be survived. If you see Michelle that time, you don't even know she died. Her face still good, her pain still. It's nothing to see if she kept cancer beside her forehead. That's it, nothing else. Like most of the chemo patients, it kind of dark and all the chemo thing, but she is so beautiful. You can't even tell. Only forehead you got her, and no leukemia or you know, cancer. So the doctor gave for six weeks behind me. The whole time she stayed with her friend apartment, she didn't tell me. So at that time I thought because you know she said she need to be here around her friend, so I'm okay. But actually that time she hiding me to cry. So one day she get everybody family together. She said everybody. She said, Mom. You know I got it. By that time, maybe the only thing I survived it, it numb, it numb, it tough. Don't know what next to do, what you have to do, you know. I said, where do you think you're dying? You stay with me, you're not going anywhere. So we have, she planned her funeral, everything, to A to Z. She had to close her coffin because she didn't want to be able to see her. Up to you know the seven of us in the family, and then we close the off and then even my close family, my mom, my auntie, her auntie, you know, we see her. She told mom, she said, Mom, between me and Melanie and Michael, 
My prayers will have it. Because I'm stronger than the other. I'm not scared of things. Before she died, in the morning, she still go in the morning to take a blood test. She began to coughing up blood. She's, that morning, she told Michael, said, Michael, I don't think I'll make it today. So Michael, you know, we didn't tell me. In the evening, she began coughing. And they give her pharmacy we call like e kit which is the hospital, you know, the people dying. She said, so everybody around her, her bed, she say goodbye to eat most and she tell her father don't save money, spend money, don't you know, don't don't save money. By that time because Michael have offered a job, he won't do it. He won't take the job because of Miss illness. And Michelle said, Michael, it's a good job. The job not waiting for you. You have to get a job. So Michael come to the boss and say, okay, my sister dying. I'm not able to work, but my sister want me to hold a job. So the, actually the people from, I think at that time from D.C. or something, the high rent say like COVID level. And they said, okay, we wait for you. So they signed the day before the, the job closed for him to hang over. After Michelle passed away, she made sure her life room, she made sure that money go to medical school for Melanie. She merely had to be a doctor. So, tell me, mom, don't get crazy, help another person. And then she say, then she okay, you say goodbye to everybody yet? She say, open your mouth and they brought the morphine. And the morphine stopped her heart. And it's hard to say the words, but please take care of it. Which is her, her husband. We met, they know each other for six years. They planned to buy the house and before they get married. But they married to the few months last you know, for her to go on. So she gone. And she gave me the mission. From that time on, beginning to you, until now, I still work on the bone marrow ADP. I go to different era, different state, just to reach out, just to save another life. And I feel like every patient I see, patient like five match for them. And that's the reason I fight for state for the uh, Michelle project, Michelle protection. Uh, law. So we did, we did that law underneath, uh, under Michelle's name because if you are a bone marrow donor, you will save the life. The coming more than 15, you get paid to do that. The coming will not punish you, hold you for uh, sickly or whatever. So we passed in California and uh, we did pass California and Seattle. Right well, now I try to work on the federal, but it's so hard to work on to all that era. I'm looking in Houston because Houston more Vietnamese Asian people in that era. And we have few doc, few patients in Houston. So I continue to work on Project Michelle, carry her name everywhere. When I find a match and after the match uh, a year, you can meet the, the, the donor and the survivor. We arrange them a meeting. So I look forward to that each time. But each time I get sad. Why not Michelle? Why not my daughter? So, for me to be survived, I work full time at Kaiser Hospital. I'm restless. At night, I come home and make a lot of phone calls. I still volunteer for the juvenile hall. I volunteer work at the juvenile hall for over 30 years. I visit all the kids, over, I think, more than 20,000 kids. I visit them every week. The mother there bought flowers for them to give them mom. I do a lot of activity with the children home. Vietnamese community, uh, like a Vietnam soldier, South Vietnam, anything I can do, I can talk, I can do an MC or singing, whatever. And I, I volunteer doing that. Uh, church, sometimes if I have a time, I will fit on the, the temple uh, to work or anything. But most of the time, I always listen with the patient. When the patient has problem, they call. The family call me. 
uh, you know, ask me the fear. The thing is, it's so scary when I, I find it, I, I hear they have a match. And I, the scary thing is when they said they'd relax. My, my heart like up and down with them. It, it, it's not that easy. But I feel like for me to get going with my life, actually, if, if God give me the book, say, here, this is your life book, will you take it? I won't. They will not. I don't know how I can survive that, how I can go to it. But when I, for me to keep going on, if I think in my past, if I think about my past, with me shall know that, I don't want to die. I don't want to leave. Even for me to kill it myself, it's funny because, you know, like, no reason. I'm too old to get broken heart. I'm too old to get poor. But to me, it, the house is nothing, the money is nothing. So for me, it, the number is not in my life. I always give. So, and then I say, oh, but life for me, it's it nothing. Look forward. It's nothing. You know, I'm not scared of dying either. Long as not going to hospital, a lot of needle, I don't like it. <laughs> But um, I know I'm afraid of dying. See, what, what is the legend of Michelle and you? What is the legend? What did you, I mean, uh, leap for, I mean, before when Michelle passed away? So what is her legend? What did she, she uh, I mean, she left for? She, she wanted me continue to, uh, to, well, she know I have no choice in life, living. That she want me happy. She want me healthy and you know living. But to me, it happy and gone. It talk about my life. It counting the time. How many time I got happy? How many year I have two happy? It not not even full finger. You know, a sadness, a pain. Yes, a lot. But to go on with life, I make another person happy. You know, if you ask for Vietnamese community, I always make things. It's exciting for the younger, the youth. I think I make them happy. That's my happy. That's my goal. And it because I don't have it. When I go to the juvenile hall. I tell, I tell the kid. I said, "Thank you for letting me to come in to share with your day life today. Not because I want you to be in the juvenile hall, but you know to share with you and and be a part of your life in the time. Thank you. Thank you. Give me that opportunity to me to enjoy to make my life a worthwhile to live." So that it, for me, it make another person happy and keep myself busy like crazy. <laughs> that good. Well, uh, having the legislature uh, recognize and uh, grant uh, the home where they donate uh, their marrowbone, uh, you know, and the the employer cannot find them because of the you know missing job for those days. It's not easy. Uh, how, uh, what do you think that the legislature uh, convinced uh, from your fight and from your work? What convinced them? You know, my English is pretty good. I have not go one single day in, in this country for school. I learned from TV, from my kid, from my husband. And I learned because I have to survive. So when I go to the, you know, for English for us to say hi and bye and easy like this, but when you go to the uh, to do the bill, it's not that easy. You have to get twenty five thousand signatures just to get on the table. So we make to the table. I go every single area, every single person I make. I got my friend Cricket and the come with you know the uh, internet. Every single thing to get that signature. And uh, the thing is, my uh, one of the guy. Uh, 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 he is the uh, senator for the Sony, and he uh, he do like uh, won the bill. If I make the bill, I have a contest on the newspaper. So my friend said, one of my friend who reporter who go at him for a long time because I do a lot of volunteer to the community, not just Vietnamese. I'm a well known in kind of cross newspaper. We can do a lot of things for the. American people in the country, I told so the ladies, you know me, the writers, you know me, she said, hey, why don't you do this? I hardly speak English. She said, oh God, I don't know what to do. So she hooked me up with the Sunni office. The Sunni office called me up. I said, hey, this is Senator and we want you to do the bill. Okay, and here I am. I come in with him. 
broken English, okay, that my daughter died and I want to do that because when I come out after help, we will scare the job. They get because they cannot do it, it's not convenient for the job. I have to do it. So he agreed. So he wrote the bill in a language. You have to review in their own language. So the first day when I go in the community to debate, okay, I tell him, I said, okay, my name is so and so. I have both people fit with mom. But I feel like I love I love my kids like every one of you love my kid. And all the mom of the parents want the kids to suffer on anyway. Every way the kid turned. My daughter passed away. And I want her successful on her life journey. I really want to do this. So by that time, the, la the last day of the, uh, the, the government of California hit bill about he behind like, over 100 bill. Our bill is very bottom. What's the name of the senator? Uh, Schwarzenegger. Uh, is that Schwarzenegger? Oh, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And then uh, I, uh, I said, okay, and then he, uh, and then the Sunye called me up and said, he don't think he can make it, but the, 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 the government so much behind the bill, maybe we have to try next year. But thing about next year, we have to start all over. I said, okay, yeah, do what we can. So I remember about 4.30, the last day, the 30th, of his, you know, the governor, governor day, the Sunye called me 4.30 and said, hey! We passed the bill. And then and he said, We passed the bill, we passed the bill. He don't believe that he they pulled it from the very last to sign it. Nobody know. Because they, they you know, another bill they call it a lobby. They tried to make the bill, so they tried to push. Everybody pushed the bill on the table for him to sign. But the last minute, he pulled him sign that. So nobody can stop or anything, interfere. I have a secret. I'm not good in English. I, I work at Kaiser, my lunch hour, I can write a story to his wife, to Maria. I started a story to him, and I, to her. And I tell, you know, my daughter, myself, and I would love my daughter. Didn't it? She sent a letter back. She sympathy with my pain. Hopefully I'm getting over that and keep going strong. But she didn't promise nothing. And then uh, we passed the bill. And then because my English is kind of broken, I said, if you don't understand what I'm saying, call me, hit <laughs> my number. <laughs> and even my friend recording me, I, 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 I read the story and really like crying. And I said, okay, if we send a letter, we send that tape also. So she can see both and understand what you're talking about. Because when I motion, I picked in English and Vietnamese, I mix both together. <laughs> so we did with Hasseville and then the there we sell making uh, protection plan. Protection. Tell me about the moment that you heard about the bill uh, passed. Uh, uh, of course you're happy. Uh, how was you related to your daughter at that moment? When we went to the uh, the capital, okay, and the Sonia went behind me and packed me and said, We shall be with that, don't worry, we shall be with that, don't worry. But by the time like, I work at Kaiser like crazy, uh, my headphone and the phone ringing, the doctor and the, the prescription all over. And when I heard past me, when I kind of stuck and turned around to it, because of my whole department, my whole name, I mean, the whole Kaiser know about my story. Because every each one of them, I make sure I stop and I have to sign the bill. So <laughs> I kind of. I passed the bill, and everybody, you know, sincerely, they don't know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm in timing prescription, and we passed the bill. What? What bill? <laughs> everybody shot. They said we passed the bill. The next thing is um, the, the office call. They want me to see honor to sign the bill the next day. And you, you cannot take walk in the next day. I said no. You have to talk to my boss. <laughs> I cannot take today off. You have to talk to them for me to take off to see honor tomorrow. <laughs> Hey, yes, and everybody laughing. I said, no, no, I cannot see him because tomorrow I work and I schedule. You want me to take the day off to see Arnold? You have to talk to my boss. And you know, here to them, it's Arnold is a big shot. You cannot tell the government to wait for you the next day or whatever. It's funny. I, I think it's funny when I, that moment, it's a, a joy, you know, joyful and, and funny at the same time because the way I make it so stupid, common, you know, 
I cannot let you. You have to talk to my boss first before you go. <laughs> so that's how they, the whole department. And because they know I do a lot of volunteer, it's pretty easy for me. If I have things to do, I think I go on. <laughs> See you later. Because somehow the patient needs me to translate it, or the patient find a match, and they want me to the, do the talking, then they call me and I, I will be on right away. Tell me about the moment that you were standing there when they signed the bill. Are you actually got the to sign or they signed it? They or? signed it. And they, and they, uh, they, it? No, they they bring to the Stanford. Oh, I remember first time, you know, the guard, the police guy undercover. Like, I was looking. Girl, I know flying in, in Stanford Hospital and all the doctors who the, do the bone marrow, who did, who like, oh, but that Steve job was there. And I don't know Steve Jobs. I see he's in the panel there, <laughs> and I I thought my sister husband said, who is that guy? He just have a transplant, Steve Jobs. So who's that? Mom, you don't know that Steve Jobs? I said, I don't know who it is. You know, it's, I miss some all the famous people. I don't even know it is. You know, when I sit down, and Arnold come down, bend over, give me a hug, and say goodbye. I know it's Arnold by by that time. I, you know, it, it he just like me, and nothing big deal. <laughs> it it it's that I I. For me, it, I, uh, I thank you, Michelle, to give me opportunity to be her mom and do what I can do to be, I don't want to be a somebody, but live my life as worldwide something to go through what I did, what I go through. What is that um, significant that we will bring into the community in terms of getting people who donate uh, more marable? It's not easy this season. It's very difficult. A Vietnamese, especially Chinese, but we talk about easy to get money, but don't get blood, you know, and no needle. And a lot of things, because education, or they said before, if you are a man, you get bone marrow, you can have, you can have sex. Woman, you can have baby. When you order, your back hurt, your bone hurt. I said, hey, I, a lot of people young now, they still have back hurt, <laughs> you know, all that. They're not too big education, they won't let them go. Sometimes we we sign up for the boy who's 18 years old. After he finished everything else, the mom come and ask the ask her to tear them up because they don't want to interfere with their kid. And also, I find a match, two best friends met. The mom would not let the best friend give to the patient. The patient died. I'm not sure how that mom can live because if at the knowledge, they would not hurting that person to help in a dying person. You know, have to make sense. It makes sense. It's not. They will not hurting you to help someone. If it's uncomfortable because all the transplant, all the blood testing, they give you sleep. You know, sleeping pill put you numb, or put you sleep for them to go through the procedure. They not put your life in in jeopardize your life. But the Vietnamese community don't look at that way. You know, it, I think the knowledge, special my generation, uh, it's difficult. But now the kid generation may be a little better. You know, with the knowledge they got from school, and then uh, a lot of friends who now are younger, we don't get the uh, old people to get leukemia or blood disorder. A lot of baby, a lot of teenagers, a lot of new young men and women got it. You know, it's it not, it not like just for older lady or just because you eat not good or you your lifestyle, not that. It's a bone marrow, it's a leukemia just from your blood and it happens. Well, from the day that you told me that the, the ratio of the, I mean, uh, marrow bone bank was 0.3%, uh, now uh, th there is any improvement from that race uh, show, can you tell? Of course, uh, it's about before, before Mr. Wen started 0.3%, and now up, up to 30 to 40%. Mm -hmm. It's a project, Michelle, we're able to write, sign up for over 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. Sign up. Mm -hmm. Imagination how many people say just now with the bone marrow, you stay there from you sign up until you're 60 years old. To the whole time, five years, two years, one year, or whatever, you can be called to be saved a life. So please, if you get called from the ADP, save the life, please forward to it. Remember a life you can save. Well, congratulations because that's very significant that the Michelle and uh, you uh, are so mother then I think that would be great. wonderful. Uh, now I want to talk about a uh, r r recent uh, effort that you're working on. 
uh, which is uh, the monument to honor William Sell after Saigon fell. Can you uh, uh, elaborate it about that story? Uh, this is for the Vietnamese community. Uh, when I go to um, when I go to this, I uh, first in San Jose they have a history park. In that park, they have about thirty or forty different country inside in the veteran home. The land is from the city, and it honored by the the group, the company who take care of the whole of that area. Mr. Lok Vu, who is in charge in the Vietnamese museum. Whatever inside the museum, he collect for South Vietnam soldier. That because he have the choice to show at the Vietnamese museum. So I asked the, uh, I asked the mayor San Jose, vice mayor San Jose, most of the uh, council members in San Jose, supervisor county of Santa Clara, most of the. Uh, the panel in the supervisor county in Santa Clara endured me to doing this. First thing is, for that area, always activity, different country, they always have event. For them to be have Vietnamese museum in there, if you learn with every day, the kids have to come in to study history, you know, like field trip and all that. So they have to go inside with the local to learn all that stuff. They have to say, oh, what it is, what is that. But if we have a monument outside, as you know, it, we have right now we have our just in the thing we have five is uh, general colonel and general who sacrificed themselves, killed themselves before the you know, doing the 1975. We have two captain in that, and they point 30 years, 38 years after they not even have a headstone in Vietnam because the government common government will not let them have a headstone with a title. We're here now, 38 years. Every event, every event, we have a, a silent moment to think of the people past. That silent moment, we can do something real. The monument will be both in English and Vietnamese. Short memory about um, the Vietnamese War, what year to what year, how many soldiers died, you know, what, what happened. In the, in the middle with the, the bitch of seven guy with the town, you know, the year they're born, when they die, and what they ran ship captain or whatever. The other sign I want to select the word before they die. I'm working on that. Like uh, Nguyen Ngoc Cẩn, Ho Ngoc Cẩn, he said, don't cover his eye to shoot him when they give him the, the joy to kill him, you know, as kill him. Don't cover his eye. He didn't do nothing wrong with his people. He didn't do nothing in shame of his village. Why to cover his eye? Just kill him. So they kill him. I think that the word is a powerful. That the word is say the Vietnamese we do have the hero in the world, or especially in the Vietnamese community here. American people, another country have to know we do have the hero. So that's the reason I kind of lobby and work really hard to go to it to have the monument. It's cost about thirty thousand dollars, as you know now thirty eight years. A lot of Vietnamese activity, collect money here, collect money there. But to San Jose, a lot of people said, oh, we didn't do nothing real. We just collect money and just there. But for this time, I guarantee we will make that. And honestly, I didn't just go into my uh, my mind about two months ago. Or about two months ago. The whole deal was in two months ago. Why? Why is it it's so important to you? You know, I, I do a lot of events. A lot of events, and I'm the one who do the MC, you know, re raise you know, re up for the flat memory, play, stand up for the asylum moment. And then in San Jose, they have 142 soldiers born and raised in, in San Jose who passed in the Vietnamese War. And they just last, I think, six months ago, they finally have the monument in drive by downtown. So on last April 30th, Mr. Lok Vu asked me to come to do little memory of them and the Vietnamese soldier in that monument, which is no name, it's Vietnamese name in there. So because of, you know, and I like to meet the lot of who happy and like to bring the kid from something. I have a big long lamp service, which is one of the group with Vietnamese younger generation. They go with me because singing and all that. So I make them do that, just for them to know what's going on. By that time I sit there and I said, why? Why they can do it? Over here in California, in not uh, San Jose, 
about 30 or more of the Vietnamese soldier family and, and you know and, and themselves. 120,000 of Vietnamese who were present in California. This morning, and only 30,000. Why cannot? Why can't we? And now we are the people work. We are approved by the order, endorsed by all the government. We have endorsed by the history part. Why cannot? Why can't we? Only 30,000. If I ask, please, each person give me a dollar, we make it happen. If people don't eat uh, for her one day, one bowl, one coffee now five dollars, please stop that five dollars that sent to me, and I guarantee you it happened by November. But again, I'm not, uh, I'm not a soldier. I'm nothing with the you know the government or anything. I do because of heart, the heart of the people looking the past, and yes, I'm happy. I'm proud because I do have hero in my life too. Well, um, thank you so much for a lot of information and sharing a lot of um, uh, emotional and also um, sorry for recall your pain. And uh, my last question is, uh, if you have a wish, what that wish would be? To see myself. One more time. What I do now? I think the more I do, the more pain I get. You know, somehow I keep climbing. Every day I keep myself busy, busy. And when I finish one of the job, every job I cover it, I finish it, I stand and close it, and I feel so lost, so painful. Like you, you run out of energy. And then Michelle all over about me, you know, my daughter, how she go too. If God give me a chance, I will give my life to her. If the doctor say, hey, she need a heart, she need a liver, she need whatever part, I will to get. I have enough in this life. But, you know, I don't know that we have a second time to be a mom and kid. But I hope, I hope I see her. I hope I be, meet her again somewhere. Uh, I, uh, and uh, do you have anything, other thing you want to say and I have not asked you yet, can you share? I think we have a good talk. You know, my, uh, I'm not saying my life is uh, the worst or the good or the bad. That's in my life. That's my story and I, I have the uh, honor for you, you know, to ask me to share with the, this story. And um, because I lived too from Vietnam, between you know the war in Vietnam and grow up and come to get here and how to survive here, it the whole journey it 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 up to now time. But I like to share because I'm a Vietnamese woman. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm admiring you because your life um, will not come easy, and believe me, you overcome all that. You are a survivor. You are a victim. You are. Thank you. Thank you so much.